Hi everyone, this is T.I. and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm continuing on this series, My Passion, and um, I have with me on this video today a very special person whose passion, I believe, will motivate you, will uplift you, and will inspire you. So it's still my passion and today I'm introducing Michelle Omo Olaye. Michelle is a very dear person to me. She's a sister, she's a friend. I actually call her Rachel Branson <laughs> and there's a story behind it. So if you do hear me say Rachel or Branson or Harabi at any point on this video, you understand why. She's going to be sharing her passion with us today. And she's someone who has taken that saying that says, when life gives you a lemon, you make lemonade out of it. She's taken it to another level. She, she's, she's a bubbly person, exciting. There's no dull moment with Michelle. She's always smiling. And, you know, it's not because everything is hunky dory but because she has a passion. I'm going to let Michelle talk about herself, you know, her background, it, just get to know her. So, Michelle, thank you so much for honoring me and coming on this video. I, I really do appreciate it. I'm so like honored for you to have invited me to come on and I'm so proud of what you're doing, you know, with your with your show and your channel. And it inspires me whenever I watch what you're talking about, it always meets me at the point of my need. So I'm really, really appreciative of this invitation and I do not take it lightly. So thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Um regarding the series that you're talking about, um, my passion, when I, you know, started thinking about it, I thought, you know, <laughs> passion is very is a very strong word that people use on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and for me, it got me thinking about the journey that I've been on. Um, and so for me, I'm, I'm a mother, um, well, I don't like using the word widow, you know, but I am a widow. Um, my husband passed away a couple of years ago. And so now I'm a single mother of three absolutely amazing children. Um, I'm also um, a life coach and a business strategist. Um, and I'm in the process of working on a book, so hopefully soon I'll be calling myself an author. Great, you know, so always got things going on. <laughs> Absolutely. <you know? laughs> um, and the thing is, my, my passion has evolved over the years. Um, initially, I would have said that my passion was about, you know, having business and setting up business and trying to make a profit and being successful. Mm -hmm. But what I realized um, over the course of the years that have kind of struck me the hardest is that my passion is, is a broad umbrella. Mm. So I tend to classify it as three Ps. So it's people, process, mm -hmm. and um, potential. Three Ps. Three Ps. Great. So my three Ps, people, process, and potential, um, came from my own personal journey of developing myself after I lost my husband. Um, and when I say people, I mean, basically I noticed that throughout time, I have a tendency to meet people all the time. And whenever I meet them, just by sparking a normal conversation, they're able to kind of talk about what their concerns are, what their challenges are. And so I come into that place whereby I motivate them. You know, so just by asking them just normal little questions, people are able to kind of open up about their challenges and the things that they're interested in and the passions that they have. And so I found that, you know, I have this certain, I call it a magnetic charisma. <laughs> Wow. whereby people draw to me naturally um, and want me to kind of be part of their process and so that takes me to the second P which is process um, I found that you know I'm, I'm someone that comes from an African heritage I find that when we tend to go through things we don't necessarily process a lot of the things that we face on a day-to-day -day basis so for example you know if someone loses their job or they, they're going to university, they didn't quite get the grade that they wanted. They don't take the step back to assess why they've gone through that and what are the lessons they could learn to help them improve themselves so that when they move on and move forward, they're actually going down the path that they really want to go through for themselves rather than what they've possibly been taught maybe when they were younger or what's been expected of them from society. And so what I discovered for me was that by taking the time out to understand myself and understand the way I think, under this, understand the way I process the situations I find myself in, it enabled me to feel more empowered and to be more 
fine tuned. Let me use the word fine tuned mm -hmm. because I wasn't um, in a place whereby I was easily misdirected anymore mm -hmm. because I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Right. I knew exactly how I wanted to do it, and I was aware that certain things could come up, mm -hmm. but that doesn't um, negate where I'm trying to go. Okay. Um, and then the third thing was potential. What I realized from a very young age, um, I've always been called a bubbly child, you know. So people would say, oh, she's so, you know, funny, she's always laughing, you know. And when I was younger, I was very much into acting and drama. But because of the culture that I come from, at that time, although things are a lot different now, you know, at that time, <laughs> yeah. there was not very much going on about encouraging you to do yeah, stuff like that. Yes. Um, I also liked writing, poetry and all of that. But those are not the dynamics that were embraced by our culture and our yeah. society. And so the route that I had to go through was the normal stuff of going to university, mm -hmm. get a degree, go get a job mm -hmm. and all of that. And so I did all those things that were expected of me, mm -hmm. not necessarily thinking about what I was designed to do. Mm -hmm. And so when I went through the process of um, losing my husband, it set me on a different path mm -hmm. and a different journey. Mm -hmm. I began to realize that there was so much more That's within me than I had realized before. Mm. So I took time out to begin to identify what my potentials were. Okay. And so I began to explore that, yeah. you know? And so for me, I feel like when I meet people now, mm. I'm always trying to help them understand what their process is and what their potential is. Mm -hmm. Because I feel, you know, as Christians, God has designed us with a greater purpose. Okay. And our purpose is not, um, just for us alone. Mm -hmm. It's a purpose that affects other people. Yeah. It pulls other people into the picture. Mm -hmm. So it's a holistic picture with different pieces. Yeah. And so when you're able to understand who you are mm -hmm. and what you're passionate um, about mm -hmm. and what your design is, then you can begin to see where you fit and not be overwhelmed yeah. by life itself, That's right. you know? Yeah. And so with me, I found that, that my passion um, my process and my potential, they all kind of pulled together, yes. but they had different remits mm. and that was okay too. Yeah. yeah. Thanks so much, Michelle. That's, it, that's like, it's so full on, it's, it's big, <laughs> you know, so I'm going to try and get you to break it down. Mm -hmm. But there's something that just occurred to me while you were talking that, you know, how did you find it when you, you know, discovered this, your three P's, how did people receive it? How do, do how, how do, do people find it? Because sometimes when you come up with something and you're trying to you know get people involved in the things that you're doing to, yeah. to, to actually sometimes you are even helping the system, you are helping the individual. There's sometimes resistance. People don't want to you know get you to do things in a certain way. You already have the way that they do things, or they feel that because you are trying to find yourself, you're trying to live your passion, they are doing you a favor. Meanwhile, at the end of the day, it takes two, it's both ways. You are giving, they are giving, you are taking, and they are also taking. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes I find that, you know, I find out that on my own part, I realize that there's been a, a kind of resistance mm -hmm. when I try to live my passion and I try to get people involved, I try to carry people along. People just feel that, you know, so how has it been for you on your oh. journey? That's a very good question, funny enough. Um, for me personally, I found that people will kind of go against what you're trying to do because what you have to remember is we live in a society whereby um, there are believers, there are Christians and they're non-Christians. Yeah. So that's one aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And um, when you as a Christian are trying to function in a world that is not based on the word of God or the, pr the principles that are Christian principles and values, mm -hmm naturally it will be a case of there are challenges there mm -hmm. however what i found was is that the challenges that you face when you face them head on will only change you oh. because when you see these challenges so let me give an example um if someone comes to me that's not a christian yeah. i would not necessarily talk to them from a christian perspective mm -hmm. however I know what the Word of God says about particular things that I know will enrich their life. Mm -hmm. So there's a way that I can say to them in, in a way that they will understand from their perspective mm -hmm. what it is I'm trying to say. So for me, I've met some people that were facing challenges in their marriage or issues with their children that were not Christians. Okay. But the advice I was giving them was from a Christian perspective, but they may not have known. Mm -hmm. So what I would normally do is I would water it down yeah. to where they are at okay. so that they're in a position to be able to receive what I'm giving them. Because the most important thing for me is that 
as you, you say, you, you know, on your show, mm. I'm inspiring, exactly. motivating and uplifting exactly. people. Exactly. And it doesn't matter so much in the in how I do it, mm -hmm. as long as I'm not harming anyone exactly. and I'm not devaluing myself. Yeah. I make sure that I meet people where they're at because mm -hmm. it's very important. It is, we're it not is. on the same it path, exactly. you know, we're not in the same lane. Mm -hmm. But I have to respect that people are going through their own journey mm -hmm. and take them at that face value mm -hmm. and be able to honor them where they're at. Mm -hmm. And when you position yourself in that way, I feel people are able to receive you better mm -hmm. rather than coming to them in a critical or judgmental type of way, yeah. which was um, how I used to operate mm -hmm. until I kind of got the understanding that I have now. Before I was a bit judgmental, I won't lie. You know what I mean? I used to be a bit judgmental. I used to be, you know, kind of point the finger, yeah, like, oh, look at your life. Why are you like this? You know, well, you should be I doing know, that. Yeah. But then I realized just because I now understand mm. doesn't mean that they do. Mm. And so what I have to do is say, okay, fine. They may not understand it right now, mm. but my hope is that in time they will. Mm. So I can't give up on them. And so that's, that's the stance that I try to mm. take when I deal with people from different aspects. Yeah.